As requested, welcome to part two of our text-based adventure tutorial. In this one, we are going to lay the groundwork for using images with our book, as well as go ahead and set up the audio. So without further ado, let's get started. So I went ahead and made five folders so that we can sort everything into it so that as we move ahead and add more stuff to this project, we can manage the complexity better. So I made a data folder, level folder, sounds folder, texture folder, and widget folder. So to do that, it's just right click, new folder, and then name it. So I'm going to move our data table and our structure page to our data folder. So just click and drag and move. And I'm gonna move our level blank to our level folder. And then real quick, I'm gonna hit file and save all because I do have this hooked up to a source control. That is what these check marks are. So it's linked to GitHub. And sometimes it has an issue renaming things if they aren't saved and you try to move them to a folder. Click both of these, drop them into our widget folder. Everything has a place and there's a place for everything. We've got everything sorted. And as we bring new stuff in, we will put them into the appropriate folder. Uh, we will primarily be bringing in obviously sounds, music, and textures. And the textures are going to be what we use for our images. Let's go ahead and bring in our images. So I just picked three images that I thought were relevant to the little adventure that I made for our data table. So just click and drag them in and drop them into your textures folder. And that's all you need to do for them. It helps if you rename them to a smaller name that's more descriptive uh, as to what they're going to be. Because later when we have to get a reference to them, if they have a really long name, it can be a pain and it can also be hard to understand what you're doing within your data table. Go back to your content folder and let's bring in the sounds that you've picked. So I picked two songs and a sound for my buttons. So just three sounds is all I'm bringing in. So I'm just going to click, drag, and drop them into our sound folder. And then I don't need to do anything else to that. Also, all of the sounds that I'm using are all WAV files. So we're not going to make cues. So I'm going to go back to the content folder and I'm just going to save all again. When we load a page from our data table row from our book, which is our data table, we need to place and load the images as well as the music for the page. So first let's add the image positions to our widget. We're going to do this by adding a size box where inside of our main interface. So open your main interface. We need to do a couple of things. So you want to set your scroll box page info. We want it to be a variable and we want to make sure that if you didn't for some reason set your scroll box choices to a variable, you want to do that too. And this way, every time we turn to a page, we can reset the scroll box back to the top because these images are going to be huge and we don't want people having to scroll around from where they previously were every time they turn to a new page. So next, what we're going to do is come up to the palette. We're going to search for size box. We're going to drag one right here into the scroll box. We want it above our title. I'm going to call this size box top position. Actually, I'm just going to call it top because it'll be easier to search later. We'll know it's a size box because of the icon and we're going to set that to a variable. We don't need to do anything else to it, but I am going to right click it and click duplicate. And I'm going to call this one bottom. So anywhere that you might have an image on your page or you might want an image, you would just put one of these size box in. We're going to create a widget that actually handles the, the image itself just to make it more manageable. And so every time we turn a page, that widget is going to be placed inside of one of these size boxes. The size box will actually expand to the size of whatever you pass it. So I'm going to compile and save. In order to add these images from our data table and in order to add the music from our data table, we actually have to have a column for both of those. We could make three columns, one that contains the position of the image for the page and one that contains the image and one that contains the music. But I want to show you how to use structures within a data table because it's not as straightforward as you would think. And there's no documentation on how to pass a structure through a data table with blueprints. So I'm going to make a structure that's going to contain both of our image and its position, and then separately we'll make a column just for music. So let's go back out to our content folder and we wanna go into data, and then we're gonna to need to make an enumeration. Let's right click, go to blueprints, go to enumeration. I'm gonna call this enum for enumeration underscore positions. I'm actually only gonna put two positions, so new and new. The first position needs to be the same name as the size box for the top. We just called it top, so we can call it top here. The second one is going to be the exact same name for the size box uh, on the bottom. So just bottom. And then any other positions you have, you would put them in here. Save that. Close it. So now we can make our structure. 
So I'm going to right click blueprints structure S T R U C T for structure underscore image. And it's going to have two variables. The first variable is going to be our position, which is going to be that enumerator we just made. So click it, type in enum and we want enum positions. The second one is going to be our image we're going to use. And this is going to be of type texture 2d. And the way you would figure out that this is the texture that you needed to use is by going into the widget and looking at the image component and then looking at the brush for the image component. And it will tell you they can accept a texture 2d. So once that's done, we're going to save and close. Now we need our data table to have these two values. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to update our structure page. So open that up. We're going to add two new variables. First one I'm going to call image. And then the second one is going to be sound. So the first one is going to be of type struct image. So S T R U C T image. And the second one is going to be sound. I think it's wave or sound base object reference. So sound base object reference. And then we're going to save that and close it. So now if we look at our data table, you'll see that it has added our two new columns and they're populated with none. Now you could just fill these out here so you could expand images, put the image you want, put the position you want and put the sound you want. And that's perfectly fine because it's not like where we had to manually enter text over here. However, I'm going to show you how to do it through Google Sheets. So in our Google Sheets data table that we have laid out, I have renamed column E to image. And I got that name directly from our struct underscore page because we added two new variables to it. One being image, which had our structure of an image, which contains its position as well as the texture to use for it. And then I renamed column F to sound. Once again, we got this from our structure page. When you pass in a structure to Unreal from a data table, this is the format you would follow. So I'll delete this cell and I'll walk you through what you have to do. We're going to start with the open parentheses and then the first variable is called position and we set this inside of our structure underscore image. Remember it has two variables, one position and the other one is image. So we'd type in position equals and then we would put in the enumeration value that we wanted. So in this case it can be bottom, top or none. Um, none is a default, it'll just return null. So in this case I want this to appear at the bottom. So I'm going to type in bottom and then comma and then our second variable, which was image equal to. And then the way that you get this path right here is you go into the Unreal project, you find the image you want. So in this case, I want the forest and cave image that I brought in. You right click it and you click copy reference. And it's also the same for sound. So let's go back to our Google Docs. And then I'm just going to click up here, right click and paste or control V. And that will give us our path. And then I'm going to close the parentheses. And that's all you have to do. So once you've done this once too, you can then just, you know, copy the cell and paste the cell wherever you might want to use that. So control C, control V. And that is how you're going to pass a structure through a data table in Unreal. Um, note that I have this position equals none, image equals none for my continue and my exit. You have to fill this out for your structure. Otherwise you will get an error when you pass it into Unreal. You don't have to do that for sound because sound, we're just passing that, that reference. Once again, to get the reference for the sounds, we can just go to our Unreal game, go to our sound folder, whatever music we want, right click it, copy reference, and then just paste it, paste it into a cell, the correct cell. So once you have filled out everything you want for your images and every um, song you want for each page, the next step is to click File, Download, and we want to download this as a .csv file. So back in Unreal, we're going to go to our data table, and then for our DT book, because that's our data table, I'm going to right click, and I have to click Reimport with New File, because when I downloaded that file, it appended itself, it no longer has the same name. Um, if yours didn't append itself and it has the same name, you can just hit Reimport. Otherwise, you have to hit reimport with new file. So mine was successfully imported with no errors, meaning I filled everything out correctly. So I can open up the data table and now you can see all of our information is here. 
I can expand this and you can see the texture as well as the enumerator is all filled out appropriately. So I'm going to save that and close it. So now let's start working on sound. Since we have our data table set up, we can reference that data table to get our sounds and our images. But let's start with sound first because it requires the least amount of work. So I'm going to go to my widgets. I'm going to go to my widget choice. I'm going to go to the event graph for it. And you could put logic in here to randomize the button sound or to pass a variable from the data table like pass a sound from the data table and say, I want the button to make this sound when they click it. So if you wanted like sword fighting or something and you can use what I'm going to show you for handling the music to sort of do the same thing here, but just for simplicity sake, I'm just going to drag off and type in play sound 2d. And I'm just going to manually set the sound to my button sound because that's the only button sound that I'm going to have for this project. So I'm going to compile and save. And that's all we needed to do for choices right now. So let's actually go back to our main interface and start setting up the sound and how it's going to work because we don't have to do any external things for it. So let's go to our event graph and then in your event graph on our event construct, I'm going to drag this fill out page all the way over here as we're going to put most of our sound stuff in here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a sound component. So I'm going to pull off of this and type in create sound 2D. And this is what we're going to continuously pass our sound into. So I'm going to actually right click this pin and promote that to a variable. And I'm going to call this current music. So every time we change music, we're going to set it here. So I'm actually going to delete that. I'm going to alt drag in current music. And we're going to hook it up right here because we're going to pull our remember on construct. We're calling our first page. So we need to set music immediately if we have a song for this page. So I'm going to set our current music right here from our data table and then I'm going to pass that to our create sound 2D and then I'm going to promote this sound component. So I'm going to right click this pin, promote to variable, and I'm going to call this music player because this is what's going to play our music. So every time that we need to change our music, we're going to get a reference to our music player and then change it. But we're going to use our fade out and our fade in nodes to do that. And then I'm going to hook this. Actually, we need to tell it to play. So I'm going to drag off of it, right click and hit play. And we'll leave the start time at zero. So it'll just play from the beginning and we're going to hook up our target. So we're not done here yet. We need to drag off of this out row and I'm going to type in break. I'm going to expand this. I'm going to pull the sound up to here and hook it up to our current sound. We're then click it and come over to details and click hide unconnected pins so that it's more manageable. And I'm going to stack it underneath our current music. That's just how I like to do things. So I'm going to select this whole section. I'm going to press C. I'm just going to call this set current music, make music player doesn't auto destroy. Meaning when it is done, if you expand this and it says auto destroy, we need to uncheck that. We're going to perpetually use this music player over and over and over. We don't want it to destroy. So make sure you do this. It's important. Now, when we turn our page, we need to update our music. So if our new page is using the same music, we just want to keep playing the music. If it's using different music, we want to fade out our current music and fade in our new music. So, in order to do these fades, we have to have a delay, so we can't use a function. We're going to have to use a custom event. We're going to come right down below the event construct, right click and type in custom event. And I'm just going to call this manage music. And we need to, in the details panel, we need to add an input. So I'm just going to hit plus and we're going to call this DT row music just so we know what we're passing to it. We know it's coming from the data table and it's gonna be of type sound wave. Which actually may be what we need to put in our structure. If it is, we'll go back and update it. So we need to branch right here. We need to compare this music to our current music. So I'm gonna press B and left click. I'm gonna hook this branch up. I'm gonna drag off of our DT row music and I'm gonna hit shift one for exclamation point equal so we get a not equal i'm going to hook up the booleans and i'm going to control click and drag in our current music and i'm going to drag it over top of this pin so it connects it up 
and then I'm gonna I'm gonna select both of these and hit Shift D to straighten them up. I'm gonna click this, Control click this, and hit Q to straighten them up. And I'm gonna bring back this branch just to clean things up a little bit. So if the music we're passing in does not equal our current music, then we need to change everything. If it does equal to our current music, then we don't need to do anything. So I'm gonna Alt click and drag in our current music so that we get a set. I'm gonna connect that up and then I'm gonna pass this DT row music to it. And then I'm gonna control drag in our music player. I'm gonna drag off of it and get the fade out node. I'm gonna hook this up. I'm just gonna use a linear fade. And for the duration, I'm gonna set it to like 0.3, so 0.3 of a second. And then I'm gonna right click right here where it says fade out duration, the pen, and hit promote variable. I'm gonna call this fade time. And we're gonna use this on our delay and our fade in so they all have the same amount of time and we don't have to worry about mixing and matching times. Now you could have, once again, your data table could pass in a fade time if you wanted it to, but I think just having universally 0.3 seconds will be fine. So I'm gonna pull this down here. So while this is fading out, we need to wait for it to completely fade out. So I'm gonna press D and left click to get a delay. I'm gonna hook them up and I'm gonna control click and drag in fade time and put it over the pin. So when this is completely faded out, we then want to update our music player to change the current music. And then we want our music player to fade back in. So I'm gonna control C, control V with the music player selected. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna drag off and type in set sound. And I'm gonna control drag in our current music. We updated it over here from our data table row. So it didn't equal the current music. So we changed the current music. We faded out the old music. We're waiting. And now we're setting it back up to play new music. So I'm gonna drag both of these under, drag this up. And then I'm going to hit Control V because we copied our music player. And I'm gonna type in fade in. I'm gonna hook it up. And I'm gonna Control click and drag in fade time and put it on our fade in duration. Double check that your fade volumes are correct. So we want, for fading out, we want it to fade to zero. For fading in, we want it to fade to one, and we want it to start at the beginning of our song. So now I'm going to select all of this, I'm gonna comment it, and I'm just gonna say, uh, evaluate music update accordingly. So this is done and we just need to call it in our fill out page as soon as we turn the page. So if we come in here, you'll see we have our new pens um, and everything that we've worked on previously. So I'm just gonna select everything but this first fill out page node. I'm gonna move it all to the right because the first thing we're gonna do is check our music. So I'm gonna drag off of this execution pin. I'm gonna type in manage music. I'm gonna hook up our DT row sound to here. Aha, so I thought we might have this problem. We set, I set the uh, wrong type for our DT sound. So I'm gonna hit compile and save. I'm gonna go back to our level blank. I'm gonna go to our data table. I'm gonna go into our structure page. I'm gonna come down to our sound. I'm gonna change it from sound base to sound wave. Object reference and then save it, close it. We can now come back to here, compile and save. And these will hook up just fine. So that was my mistake. So now if we've done everything right, we can compile and save, and when we press play, we will get sound. There's the sound, and it changed when I went to a new thing. That is everything I'm gonna cover in this video. In the next video, I will go over the images that we're gonna use in our text-based adventure. So if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.